Black Out Loud Media Group. Welcome back to another episode of the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast, the place where poetry meets conversation. I'm your host, Terrence P. Elmore. And before we get into today's topic, make sure you hit that plus sign so you don't miss an episode. Also, please subscribe to my blog, thebrownsugarcafe.blog. And if you find any value in this episode or any other episodes, make sure you leave a heartfelt review. So with that being said, let's get to it. What's up? What's up, everybody? Thank you all for tuning in to another episode first episode of 2024 i hope that everyone is doing well i hope that you had a wonderful year so far hope that you're getting everything that uh, you've hoped for in 2024 things are ramping up with my book finally we'll have some uh, official book releases coming up in february if you're in the goose creek area on february 10th i will be at the turning page bookshop between 11 and 2 p.m so come out and join me i also will be at all good books in columbia south carolina on february 23rd from 6 p.m to 8 p.m so if you can make one of those please do so come out and join me come out say hello come out purchase a copy if you are one of the people who ordered a copy from amazon and you want your book signed come you can come bring your book Uh, If you've purchased any of my books and you can make it out to one of those events, please come out. I want to sign some books, get to meet you all, talk with you all. And this will actually be the first time I've ever had something like that in this capacity since I released my previous book, The Essence of Love, which came out right before the pandemic. And um, this uh, being back at the Turning Page Bookshop is bittersweet because that was the last book signing event that I that I had. I've been to some one or two author events since then, um, kind of after the pandemic. But that was the last one that I did. So really excited to get back out there. So if you can, please come out. And so that's what's happening new with me for the new year. And the new year is what I want to talk about. A lot of us make goals, resolutions, whatever you prefer to call them at the end of last year about how things are going to well how we're going to start things off for this year and a lot of things on those lists you probably didn't get a chance to start there are probably some things on your list that you have started and somewhere along the line you fell off you know this happens this is is normal and it's nothing to beat yourself up about so that's what i want to talk about today like if you have those things that you're working towards and something happened where you didn't let's use the gym for example i know at the beginning of the year is a heavy time in the gym you see people you've never seen before in the gym is packed especially january 1st and this is around the time where gym attendance kind of tapers off and it's easy to get going but something may come up that messes up a new routine like something you just started that happens things get thrown off track maybe one day one day turns into two to three to four and now it's a week that you haven't been to the gym or a week that you haven't worked on that goal that you set for yourself maybe you had a writing goal you said this is the year that i'm gonna finish my book or start my book and you started off great you were writing january 1st january 2nd and so on and then maybe around january 10th something happened you didn't get to it that day oh i'll just do double tomorrow and tomorrow comes and nothing happens and then you fall into this routine of not working on your goals your personal developments and things like that i'm here to tell you that that's normal especially when you're starting something new it's normal to start off with a lot of steam and then somewhere along the line kind of taper off and that's something we do all the time we use the start of something to start our goals and i think where we set ourselves up for failure is once the start of a new year a new week a new month happens and we're on track and then somewhere before the end of that year that month that week we fall off track 
Now we're telling ourselves that we failed, but that's not true. You haven't failed. You had a time period mishap of where, you know, you didn't stick with what you were doing, but you can start back. Let's say you started something on a Monday and well, ironically, the beginning of the year was on a Monday. Let's say Thursday comes and you don't feel like doing whatever you started at the beginning of the week and then Friday comes. It's easy to say, I'll just wait until next Monday to start again. You have to break that, that cycle of waiting to start to waiting to start something at the beginning of a week, month, year, and so forth. Whenever you have a goal, a desire, I think that whenever you wait until the start of something, you're actually starting to push yourself away from that that desire and that goal. Now it does work for some people. I'm not saying that this, this is always the case, but in a lot of cases, waiting on something is just you're training yourself to procrastinate. If you have the desire to do something, I think you should do it right then. You want to go to the gym and work out and you're thinking about it. You have time. A lot of gyms are 24 hours. You can go do it then. If you're thinking about starting a book, writing a book, and you say, well, I need, I need to sit down in front of my, my laptop to kind of get it started. You have some sort of note app on your phone. If you don't, you can download it. You can download Microsoft Word. You can download Google Documents, whatever. But you have the ability to write, start writing something on your cell phone. We have our cell phones on us at all times. And a lot of times we're just scrolling through social media not really doing anything but watching people who've actually started their goals and stuck with them so instead of us using that as motivation sometimes you can get into the rhythm of comparing yourself to somebody and say wow i can never be that i can never do this but guess what they started from somewhere and along the way where they started they might have fallen off. They might have put something to the wayside. And also, you know, sometimes life happens. Life happens to where you can't actually stick with something, you know, that you started with. And you may have a mishap here and there, but pick it back up. Don't quit. Pause when you need to, but don't quit. I think a lot of times we don't actually celebrate when people pause on something, especially ourselves. We get down on ourselves and we look at ourselves as a failure, but if you're reaching a moment where you need to take a pause, that's perfectly fine. You should always recognize moments when you need to take a pause and do so, but get back into the routine and, and start where you started from. Or sometimes you may even have to start over and that's perfectly fine, but don't quit. Don't let the start of a week, the start of a month, the start of a year be the determining factor, whether you're going to start doing something that you have desired to do for the years, something that you have in your heart, an idea that you have, something that you need to get completed. I think we make things too difficult when we're depending on the start of a week, month, year. Don't allow yourself to fall into that trap. If you're listening to this podcast right now and you know that you started off the year real strong, whatever you said you were going to do in this year, you falling off, take this moment to start back. Whatever it is, start today. Start today. If you're listening to this really late at night, okay, I can give you that. It's real late at night. You might not want to go out and go to the gym or whatever, but start tomorrow by the latest and set realistic goal for you, goals for yourself. If you can't start tomorrow in the morning if you can't start today then set a, a deadline for you to be able to start tomorrow by a certain time and stick with it sometimes we need accountability partners i've been guilty of this you don't want to tell somebody that you have a plan to do something because they're going to hold you accountable and then you don't want to hear from somebody else what you already know that you're not working on your goals, your dreams, your aspirations. So you don't, you don't really want to tell anybody because you don't want that accountability. You don't want somebody else recognizing that you aren't doing your part, but you may very well need that. Matter of fact, you do need that. You do need to find an accountability partner, somebody 
who can say, hey, when's the last time you done this? Or, or how, you know, I talked to you last year. You said you were going to start doing X, Y, and Z. How's that working out for you? Find somebody who can encourage you. It's really good to find somebody who shares the same goals as you because you all can encourage and inspire each other and hold each other accountable. But you don't always need somebody that has those same goals as you to help you and encourage you and hold you accountable for your actions. You really just need somebody that has a particular goal or goal oriented mindset, something that they want to do, something that they want to see themselves completing. And you all could partner up and inspire each other and help each other get to that point. It may not always be friends and family. It may be some community that you find online through social media. There are a lot of groups on Facebook that hold each other accountable. I had Eric Harrison on here on my last episode, and he has a group on Facebook where they hold each other accountable. Go back and listen to the episode if you haven't. The information is in there. Um, Matter of fact, go back and listen to those two episodes. People have channels on Instagram now where if you join their channel, they're not just trying to pump you with ads and trying to sell you stuff. They're actually building community and giving advice and giving us the tools that we need to achieve the things that we want in our lives. Every year, we always celebrate and we celebrate in a way to say that this year is going to be different from the previous years sometimes that doesn't always happen and the number one reason why that hasn't happened is because we're doing the same things and expecting the same results look at that also if you've been working on something for years and it just hasn't panned out the way that you expected go back to the drawing board and see what things you need to change what routines you need to change, what things you need to take out and what things you need to add, but don't quit. I want everybody to be the best versions of themselves. And I want this to be the best year that we've all seen yet. So in order to do so, we have to give ourselves some grace. We have to understand that it's okay to pause when we need to, but we also have to restart, but we can't stay there. We have to keep going. We can't quit. If you have a book on your heart to write, write the book. And I know a lot of you say, well, I don't know what to write. I don't know where to start. Just start. Just take whatever you're going to use to write, whether it's a pen pad, your notes app, if it's a voice recorder and just start, just start. And you'd be surprised how the information just flows out of you. And you'd be surprised how therapeutic writing is for you. It's a lot of things that we hold inside that we don't necessarily know that we're holding inside. And these things, I believe, that we go through are to help other people. Matter of fact, I know they're to help other people. We don't go through these things just to go through them. So when you have an idea or something that you want to write about and it's this burning that you need to get out, just start. Don't make any excuses. Don't make any excuses. Don't trick yourself into thinking that nobody will read it or it doesn't make any sense. Just get it out. And then you find people to help you put that information out. You find you people that can help you publish that information, people that can recognize your vision and help you make it come true. If you have a podcast you want to start, just start recording your voice. I know for me, it was annoying to hear my voice for a long time. Even before I started podcasting, just hearing my own voice, it was just, it was annoying. But over time, the more and the more I recorded, the less and less annoyed I'd become. And it's something that I don't even think about. But if I hadn't got started, I wouldn't have been to this point. If you have health goals, working out goals and things like that, and you've, you know, said that you were only going to eat a certain thing or cut back on certain foods and things and you had those moments where you kind of fell back fell behind and started picking up those old habits again that's fine you can start back over maybe you're working out goals and you're you're eating differently those goals maybe you were a little too ambitious with that maybe you try to go to cold turkey or maybe you went in the gym and tried to lift everything in there and you got discouraged because you made it too hard 
So look at taking baby steps. Take baby steps and just keep improving every week, every couple of days. But start somewhere where it's easy enough where you can begin and then you gradually increase. You gradually increase. And that's the way that we're going to improve. We're going to have to make small changes and add different things and just gradually increase along the way. Every other day, every day, every week. I'll use weightlifting for instance. If we're bench pressing 225 and we've been doing that for the past five years and we haven't put any more weights on, how do we know how much more we can do? How do we know what our max is? How do we know what our true limits are? I think a lot of what we do is we limit ourselves with our beliefs and that we can only do so much or that we only intended to do so much or we get into a place of comfort where I pretty much have a good life going. I don't really need more. This is cool. I'm good where I am. In order to be the best versions of ourselves, the learning never stops. We have to learn new things and apply them. Technology is a good example. Technology is has been growing very fast the last couple of years. It's always growing fast, but it seems like the last couple of years, things are really ramping up. And if we're not educating ourselves and learning how to use these tools, we get left behind and we're not bettering ourselves. So don't get comfortable where you are to where you don't want to improve, where you don't want to learn, because we definitely need to learn and be receptive to learning new information so that we can continuously be the best version of ourselves. Our best version in 2023 should be over. We shouldn't consistently be that same version over and over again. If you were that same version in 2022, 2021, what can you do to change that to make 2024 different? Here's a few thoughts I just want to get out there. I want to encourage you all that, you know, if you haven't stuck with your goals so far, it's OK. Get back to it and make it happen. Once again, my new book is out. Paint is not our only paintbrush. I have author signings coming up in February. The information will be in the description. Thank you for your time. And as always, keep pushing forward. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Terrence B. Elmore, and this is the place where poetry meets conversation. Hit that follow button and turn on your notifications so you won't miss an episode. Check out my blog, thebrownsugarcafe.blog. Also connect with me on Instagram at thebrownsugarcafe. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and as always, remember, keep pushing forward.